welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast show. And it's now time for relationships. And it is the month of love. Some call it the month of Feb. The month now, of from, Feb. It is the month of Feb. <laughs> it is the month of Feb. <laughs> so from a, well, a lot of people are focusing on that. But okay, also, you know, okay. at the end of the day, it's February. And from having butterflies in your tummy to falling head over heels to being swept off your feet, with all of the riot of turbulent emotions that comes with it, mm -hmm. love surely does a number on us. And we still, you know, there's still, we all love the feeling of being in love and, of course, being loved. And with Valentine's Day happening this Thursday, it also serves as the perfect opportunity Opportunity to look deeply and celebrate the beauty of love. Yeah, so today we're asking, why do people love love and why does it feel so good? <laughs> and how can we harness these feelings to connect this Valentine's Day? Our relationship expert, Dr. Eve, is here. Uh, she's in the building to discuss this topic. And of course, our lines are open as always. 021-430-9881. Hit us up with your questions or your comments and we would love to engage with you. Dr. Eve, good morning. Hi. Great well, to have you. What Dr. a time. Yeah. This is a cool topic. Mm. I mean, yeah. you know, we are asking why do people love love? So let's define what love right. is. Let's talk about this, mm. this incredible emotion that we all seek, even to our own detriment. This sure. This fatalistic emotion that sure. we keep searching for over and over again. And we'll talk about the poll that I put up. So there are some theories around love, many theories around love. And one of the theories that I am most, most attached to is that of Robert Sternberg who says that there are three parts of love. We have intimacy, we have passion, and we have to have commitment. So those are the three ingredients that one needs to have. Intimacy means a feeling of attraction, a feeling of friendship for this person, a feeling of openness, disclosure. And passion is obviously something that we feel the chemical feeling around it. And then commitment. You can't have love if there isn't enough commitment. And it's kind of part of the heartache and fatality of love when one feels as if they're attracted and in love with somebody and attached to somebody and it's not reciprocated and there isn't enough commitment around it. Um, but what I do want us to talk about are what, is what happens to the brain because love is all about the brain. It's not mm. about the heart at all. We don't feel it in the heart. We feel it in the body. So, oh, so even though that feeling like that warm fuzzy, I guess, yeah. or that guababa, happens here. Well, look, that's your gut, right? Okay, that's not even your heart. Butterflies. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's in your tummy. Look, it's there. It's, it's not there. But it, so it all happens here, It all chemically. happens in the brain chemically. So let's talk about what happens when you meet somebody first. Um, and even sometimes when you look at the partner that you're with, you may get that feeling of lust. That's the first thing when you meet somebody. And that is because there is a surge of what's called testosterone and estrogen. Those are your love or your sexual chemicals that run through your body and they released and suddenly you feel enormously alive and enormously sexually alive and feel very lustful towards this person. Mm. Many people get stuck in that and that's something I'd like to hear from our viewers. You know, do you get stuck in that feeling of lust that you want to keep chasing it and you keep chasing it and so you don't get into the next stage which is that of attachment because you just love the feeling of lust and don't want anything else. If you continue to go along and move along from lust, you move into attachment, which is like intimacy. Mm. It's a feeling of, I want to get to know you, that warm, fuzzy feeling. So it's not like chemical feeling. It's a warm, fuzzy feeling. And then you've got different hormones that are coming through, which is dopamine and noradrenaline. So that means that you really, you can't sleep, you can't eat. It's that falling in love experience. So it's not then about the lust and the passion. Mm -hmm. It's more about the feeling of good feelings, which is dopamine, mm -hmm. and the feeling of adrenaline. I can't sleep, I can't eat, I don't stop thinking about this person. I'm just completely bathed because your brain gets absolutely mm. bathed in these feelings. You, you can't help yourself. You're just agitated, you're restless, you can't focus, you can't work. It's that wonderful feeling of being attached to somebody. You want to speak to them, you want to see them, you want to be in bed with them, you just want to hang around them. And then that settles and then the brain moves into the next phase, the last phase, which is attachment or friendship. And those are lovely feelings coming from what's called oxytocin and vasopressin. And those are the cuddle hormones and the, the, the hormone of attachment. Mm. The more I am together with you, the more these hormones are released inside of me, and I enjoy that feeling. So I want to be close to you all the time. But it's a more relaxed feeling. It's not all this adrenaline going through your body. You move away from that. Because the body can't sustain the lustful, attached feelings all the time. You just, you just can't do that. You'd be in a state of complete crisis all the time. So you have to move through the process and get into French, 
many people don't like that well, okay. feeling. Well, I had to snap out of that because I was just drowning in, in that day. chemical concoction that you were <laughs> putting together. And it's a very yeah. interesting way of observing and understanding yeah. love from a biochemical point of view. biological in, point of view. In your head. Yeah. Okay, uh, so the question still stands. Why do people love love so much? And why does it feel yeah. so good? And how can we then better harness these feelings to connect on Valentine's Day? That's right. Our lines will stay open, so feel free to call us. It's 21 if you have any comments or questions for Dr. Eve. It's my feel good Welcome back to your feel-good breakfast show, having random conversations all the world, all around love. And that's the topic of the day, right? Because Valentine's Day is just around the corner. It's on Thursday. And with our relationship expert, Dr. Eve, on the hot seat. And our lines open on 021430, asking the question, why do we love love so much? And why does it feel so good? Why does it feel so good, why Zoe? Why does it feel why? so why? good? Dr. Eve. Uh, I just have to, uh, I was listening to some, somebody uh, analysing Valentine's Day and what is the purpose of giving flowers and chocolates. Mm. And it's important important to know that in chocolates there is a certain chemical called PEA. PEA? Yeah, yeah, yeah that is released. Like PEA. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's literally put into the chocolate because it just makes you feel so good, which no. makes you keep eating more and more of the chocolate. No. So, yeah, so anyone who's really health conscious, please don't give any chocolates. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh. Chocolates <laughs> kind of gives you this warm, fuzzy feeling. The other ways to do it, like putting arms around somebody or looking somebody in the face and saying, I really care about you, yeah. I really admire you, I like your strength, or I like the way that you take care of yourself or of me. So there are many ways of giving Valentine's uh, love without having to spend money. Yes. <laughs> We're going to come to that part. All right, Kat, you so, wanted to say. Yeah, so earlier on we spoke about the chemical reactions and the scientific yeah. and physiological explanation of what love is. Yes. That was all good, it was a beautiful hormone. Nice. But then huh? you also did say that yes. uh, during the break now, there is a dark side. There's a dark side. To love. And I'd love for viewers to call in about the dark side of love. Mm -hmm. Because, which is, can we talk about the poll? Yeah, let's go to the poll. Okay, because um, what I asked is, falling in love occurs in three stages. In which stage do you mostly get stuck? Mm. Either lust, attraction, or attachment. Um, Zoe, what did we learn here? So, um, according to the poll over there, it's 23% that says they're stuck in lust, 23% says they're stuck in attraction, and 54% they say they are with the attachment slash friendship. Yeah, bracket. isn't that healthy and fabulous that they're in attachment? But then I wonder what you're doing online. Are you seeking lust and attachment in cyber infidelity spaces, mm -hmm. or is your brain well controlled? So, to come to what you're saying, uh, which is related to this cat, Love can be very fatal. Love can be treacherous. Love can be unbelievably painful and aching. So we long for it. The brain loves love. The brain loves to be releasing all these wonderful chemicals because it loves feeling love. But there are other negative parts to it which it also brings along. Jealousy. Mm. Phone and tell us about jealousy. Mm -hmm. Jealousy, erratic behavior, <laughs> irrationality, dangerous behavior, intimate partner violence, all in the name of love. We kill people that we love because we're jealous of them. When they leave us or they threaten to leave us, we lock them up, we abuse them, we feel afraid, we want to control them. That's because your brain is so terrified of losing those good feelings that it just wants to hold on to the person and so it releases these, in, these in lustful emotions in double doses, double doses. Yeah. And you're not, you can't think straight, you're, you're impulsive, you're not making good decisions at all. And there are too many of us who suffer and are hurt by this kind of fatal love. So how do you help someone where you can see that this love relationship is not healthy? Right. What do you do as an external party? Because the yeah. person who's at the receiving end of this love doesn't realize it because they're so in love. Mm. So they're kind of stuck in uh, the attraction, the attachment phase, mm -hmm. Zoe, where they're attached because of the releasing of oxytocin and vasopressin, which happens when you live together, as I said, when you sleep together, there's a feel-good bonding, they're bonding hormones, and so you feel like really bonded to this person, and so it feels incredibly difficult to detach and to break up and to get rid of those feelings. There's a fear around it, which is chemically driven as well, which is why we have no judgment around people who stay in relationships which are unhealthy and toxic, because there is a chemical reaction, there's a fear of letting go of those love hormones even though they're unhealthy, even though you feel really bad. And that's why, you know, one wants to reach out for support. One okay. wants to reach out and say, actually, I'm not feeling loving. I'm not feeling loved. I don't feel this is healthy. Yeah. All 
All right, we're going to keep our lines open, 021-430-9881, as we continue our talk with Dr. Eve around this topic of love, what it means, and how the marketing gurus out there are capitalizing on all these <laughs> chemical reactions happening in our brains, yeah. and we'll reflect on that. But give us a call and let us know yeah. your comments or questions around that four-letter word. I can make my day. All right, we're back again with Dr. Eve. Have a look at the poll, and of course, you can still participate uh, with it or yes. in it on Twitter, where the question is, which stage of the three in love do you find yourself most stuck in? We've also opened our lines on 0214309881. Why do we love love so much? Why does it feel so good and the things that we do for love? Because some people say, I would do anything for love, but I won't do that. We still oh. don't know what that is. <laughs> Meet love, hit us up. <laughs> Everyone has their limit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's just interesting though how you, you know, we keep referring to music. Yeah. And how me the media have fed the love frenzy. And if we don't feel the certain way of love, we feel inadequate, we feel as if we're not really in love, or we should be feeling yeah. certain yeah. feelings. There's a lot of pressure. Yeah. Qu question. There's a lot oh, sorry, of pressure. Go ahead, go ahead, please. Oh, no, I was going to take it a different direction. Mm, go, go, go. You. Okay, go well, Dr. Eve, with yes. Valentine's Day being on Thursday, what yeah. are some of the benefits of celebrating it? Because you get those people that be like, no, we don't celebrate it. Mm -hmm. There are some people that are gaga over Valentine's Day, but what <laughs> are some of the, the benefits? <laughs> the benefits of it? Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. Are there any benefits? <laughs> I don't think there's any benefit except the commercial benefit around it. No, let's, let's be a little serious around it. I think that many people fear rejection mm. and many people fear commitment and many people fear being vulnerable to say to somebody, you know, I really crush on you, I really fancy you or I really like you or I want to take our relationship a step further into commitment. And so they wait for the opportunity. And I think Valentine's Day is an opportunity that is mm. globally recognized mm. as almost permissive for somebody to say, okay, you know, I'm a little shy around this. I'm going to be bold and I'm going to jump in and I'm going to do day. the thing. On this day, I'm going to do this thing because it's going to make, you know, it's, it's kind of everyone else in the world is doing it. Okay. Uh, but then we have the reverse where it's please don't expect too much because you're going to be disappointed. Yeah. If you don't get that commitment that you want or you don't get that call or that sext or whatever you're looking for and then you feel this day is come and gone. No, 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 there are 364 other days. Yeah, there are because a lot of people place so much importance on this one yeah, singular yeah. day. For some people it's, it's relationship or life defining. Uh, give yeah. us your last few tips with regards to this entire topic of love and yeah. the entire feeling around Valentine's Day. Right, your, so I just want thoughts. people to be aware that falling in love, lust, attraction or attachment isn't something you can really control that there is a chemical thing that goes on around it and you just want to be aware of what I always call the other signs that come in, the red flags, like this doesn't feel comfortable and try and get, <coughs> excuse me, get out of a situation before it becomes too attaching, before all of those vasopressin, oxytocin, feel good dopamine feelings really kick in and you feel I'm in it and I don't know how to get out of it. Just okay. be very aware of that. But love being in love, it's fabulous, but you also have to take responsibility for being in love. There are certain actions that one has to do. One has to be committed, one has to be present, one has to feed it, one has to be nurturing of it to be able to get the full benefit out of it. But also to prioritize your relationship, prioritize your relationship with self, prioritize your relationship, and not to be too disappointed Valentine's Day if it doesn't work out for you. Celebrate yourself every day. Go yeah. buy yourself flowers and no chocolates every <laughs> no day. Chocolates. Do it for yourself. Uh, Dr. Eve, you always manage to make us feel so good. Thank you for, for coming in. We hope that was an enlightening conversation to you around the topic of love with Valentine's Day just around the corner. We're going to take a quick break and we'll see you again next week, Dr. Yes, Eve. And yes, as always, yes. thanks, babe. <laughs>